blessings anew every morning. So we thank you for your blessing on us today. We also thank you, Father, because you said where two or three are gathered together in your name that you are right here in our midst. So Lord Jesus, you are welcome in this place. We ask that your Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts tonight. Speak to our minds. That we might leave this place knowing that it was good for us to have been here. Yes. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are our Savior. You are our baptizer. You are our healer. You are our liberator. And you are the one who makes us whole. So we come to you tonight to give you thanks. Thank you. Give you thanks. Thank you. And for a few moments, just feel free to utter a word of thanksgiving to God. I thank you, Father, for that day many years ago when you saved my life and made me whole. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Give thanks. So this is interesting. This picture, along with three others, actually was drawn many years ago by a United Church minister. He had three of these. And this is the one, Jesus the Liberator. And I call him the Laughing Jesus. Amen. Sometimes you think of Jesus as being sobered. Well, when he took the sin of all mankind upon him, that's the cross, of course not. That was a heavy load to carry. But I believe Jesus was a happy man. His children flocked around and people would come from all over to hear him speak. And not only uh, did they hear him speak, but they also received him as the Lord of their lives too. So Jesus delivered. For quite some time, people have been asking me if I would mind sharing some of the basic principles of the Word of God uh, in certain areas. One of those areas is Jesus as a Savior. Now, most of these scriptures, uh, most of you will know. If you've already accepted Jesus as Lord of your life, then uh, you will understand what I'm talking about here. But there's a second level, too, that Jesus not only is a Savior, but he's also a liberator. He's also one that can set you free and to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And the gifts of the Spirit will flow through you. For many years, I knew Jesus as a Savior. Before that time, up to 17 years of age, I knew God as uh, a head acknowledgement. In other words, I acknowledged there was a God. I acknowledged there was a Jesus. I didn't know very much about the Holy Spirit. And I was very, very religious. And uh, you can be very religious and go to church every Sunday. I know, because I went to church every Sunday. When I was a kid, I didn't have any choice. And I had loving parents that just believed that seven kids, along with his wife, would go to church every Sunday, whether we wanted to or not. And we didn't want to many times, but we went anyway. And so I'm thankful to God that I had parents that loved me enough to force me to go to church when I didn't want to. I wanted to go play baseball. I wanted to go play hockey. And in those years, when I was raised, my mother was a primitive Methodist. And... Uh, my father was Methodist, but also Anglican too. And uh, mother, if you were primitive, raised in a primitive Methodist home on Sunday, that was a sacred day. You didn't ride your bicycle. You didn't play ball. You didn't even play agates. Well, you people won't know what those are marbles. You know? <laughs> well, you know them. You're over 30. <laughs> but now, mind you, we did sneak out the back of our shed. And we did play agates. And uh, my dad was wo wounded in the First World War. And he had a brace on his leg. He had to wear that because he had a short leg. I don't know now what I'd have done if I'd known about that. But dad had a brace. And uh, uh, he uh, had this brace. But for some reason or other, he never oiled the little bar that went into his heel. And so whenever dad walked, you could hear it. Squeak. <laughs> it was a dead giveaway for us boys, though, because as soon as we heard that door open and heard that squeaking, we knew Dad was on his way out. So, guess what? We had a foot over the ankle hole. All the marbles were in our pocket. And he would come out and say, what are you doing, boys? Well, we're just talking. <laughs> okay, boys, go ahead. I know very well as a father, he knew exactly what we were doing. But he went back to report to my mother that everything was fine. They're good little boys. Well, we weren't all as good as we should have been. Yeah. But I'm thankful to God that at 17, my religion dropped from my head to my heart. 
Christ. Amen. I accepted Jesus. I was very active in the church. I love the church. I don't always love what the church does, but I love the church. And for those years, I was very active. I used to sing in the choir, Bob. Believe it or not. Didn't have much of, I didn't have much of a voice, but I used to sing. And then one day I was away and they said, oh, they got the organ fixed. <laughs> <laughs> I love singing, I still do. I'm going to go through, this is very basic stuff for most of you, I know that. But we are taping tonight too, and the reason we're taping tonight, we're trying to get a fairly decent copy of this teaching because there's one of the people who want to send this down to Guyana and to possibly get it onto television if it's a good program. So those who are sitting right next to the camera, if you're going to say hallelujah, say hallelujah. <laughs> and John, we're so glad tonight, John, that you have brought your camera with us too. As we all know, we worship a triune God. We don't worship three gods. We worship one God but a God that has revealed himself in three dimensions, if you want, or three persons. We know that he's revealed himself, primarily in the Old Testament, of course, he reveals himself as Father. And then, later on, as Son. In the New Testament, we come to God the Father, coming into the world now as God the Son. And we also know that when Jesus left this world, it was God the Holy Spirit that is active. He's the active one in the world today. But Jesus is also active. So is the Father. And many people have come into a new dimension of the Father's heart of love that fills them to overflowing with praise and thanksgiving. And it's in that Father's heart of love. It's hard sometimes if you haven't had a very good earthly father to accept that. But let me tell you, don't compare your earthly father with the Father. The Father's heart of love is far greater than anything you ever know. And also we know that in the beginning of time, in the book of Genesis, it says, in the beginning, God. He created the heavens and the earth. And the Bible says that the earth was without form and void. Now that word in the Hebrew, void, is the word that we change into English. We change it, it was in chaos. In other words, when God first created the world, it was a very beautiful world. In the beginning, God. So God only creates those things that are perfect. So it was a perfect world in the beginning. Probably millions of years ago, we don't know when that time was. But all we know is that somewhere along the way, an enemy got into the situation and brought chaos or darkness out of that original creation. Now I thought I was alone in this for many, many years, believing that there was another creation uh, long before the time of the Genesis 1-2. And then I believe that's where all we have some of the records of it in our geolo geology at various places of our world where things that we haven't got anything that compares to what they were doing down in those years. I think there may have been a, a large span of time from Genesis 1-1 to Genesis 1-2. And what we have in Genesis 1-2 is a beginning of a new creation. As I said last Sunday in the church, a new beginning. Now you may not agree with me with this, but I think if you look at the scriptures carefully, not in the book of Genesis, but 